All right, today we're going to talk about more about tube theory, or at least circuit theory. What we're going to talk about now is coupling the stages together. The first one we got here, this is called a resistor capacitor coupling, or RC coupling, or also known just as resistor coupling. And it basically you have two tubes. You got the first one and the second one that we're going to couple together. And uh, we basically couple with this circuit right here. We have our load resistor that is for the first tube. We have a coupling capacitor here, also known as a blocking capacitor. We have our grid resistor, which is right here for the second tube. Now, this circuit. Uh, is the most common that you'll run into, especially in audio circuitry, audio amplifiers, um, mainly because it does cover uh, a wide range of frequencies in uh, the audio frequency ranges and does a pretty good job at coupling the, capac uh, the uh, tubes together. It also uh, is the cheapest means of doing it. Resistors and capacitors are pretty reasonable besides the fact that we have a voltage amplifier and with a voltage amplifier you already know that we need a load resistor here so that's already a given. We have to have a load to have a voltage drop across it and this is our basically a biasing resistor used in the grid of this tube so that's pretty well necessary and uh, it gives uh, the proper impedance for the input impedance the coupling capacitor is necessary to block the plate voltage from this grid of this tube so pretty much need most of the parts here anyway now some of the disadvantages of this is when we look at the frequency response and uh, which is a rough curve of frequency response we have frequency here and we have the gain here of the tube of the stages and at low frequencies we, we start dropping off in the middle frequencies we're pretty level and we got good gain high frequencies we drop off again. Now I want to show you something that I have never once showed you before and equivalent circuits. Anytime you're working with design and understanding of a design circuitry you deal with more, it's easier to deal with equivalent circuits. Now to explain this a little bit this and this represents the tube now you have mu eg. eg is my input signal mu is my amplification factor of the tube so this represents the signal going through the tube and being amplified rp which is my plate resistance which is effectively the resistance of the tube is in series with it because this is going to have to be figured in and it will reduce the output of the tube overall. So basically the equivalent circuit is right here. That's your tube. Now you have RL I'm going down. We have RL and RG. Same things as over here. Now you notice I don't have the coupling capacitor because this is middle frequency. Now the reason for that is in the middle frequency ranges right here The coupling capacitor pretty much acts like a dead short, like it's not even there. So, and for all practical purposes, it isn't. It's all capacitors to AC has a little bit of resistance to AC, um, and it's called capacitive reactance. But when that resistance, that capacitive reactance, is so low compared to the other circuits, you can pretty well consider it non-existent and in the, in the middle frequencies it is 
So in other words, basically, whatever shows up across RL, which is where we get our output from, will show up and be represented on RG because they're in parallel. Anytime you got a parallel circuit, the voltages always stay the same. That's how come your house is wired, all the outlets are wired in parallel, so each socket in your house, no matter where you're at in your house, always has the same voltage on it. Same thing happens here. We're dealing with voltage amplifiers, so we're concerned about the voltage. So the voltage across RL will be the same as across RG, which then goes into the input of the next tube. Now, at low frequencies now, when we get down here in this low band, then we have to start figuring in the capacitive reactants. Because at low frequencies and the capacitors that we're using values that we need to use for audio circuits that allows this here and also blocks the DC, well, it shows up in low frequencies. At the lower the frequency, the more it starts building up. Now, the way it reacts, though, is it acts like it's in series with RG. So now I've got RL that is in parallel with my cap coupling capacitor in RG. What happens is, is, again, I have a certain voltage here. Now I'm going to have that same voltage across this parallel circuit, but since this has to start being figured in, it's going to have a voltage drop, which is going to take away from RG, which is where I take my output from. So the greater this voltage drop, the less voltage I have here going into the next tube, which starts attenuating my gain and taking it down. At high frequencies, we have a different situation. At high frequencies, my coupling capacitor is literally a dead short. But I have other capacitance in the circuit. I have capacitance that's going to be across from here to here in this tube. I'm going to have other capacitance that deals with how this is wired up, my wiring, how my connections are made, and everything else. So that ends up being what we know as CT, or total other circuit capacitance. Anything that's in that circuit that can be considered a capacitor will start showing up. At high frequencies and the way it's hooked in it acts like a resistor in parallel with these two. So we still have our voltage going through but this starts actually acting like a short as going through here which effectively starts cutting down on RG because as the voltage is being applied when I get to this point if I have what appears to be a short or a low resistance a lower than RG then part of my more of my current's going to go through here which is going to reduce the voltage drop that's going to appear on RG so effectively I attenuate again so this is some of the problems that an RC coupled system can have. Uh, and, and in actuality, pretty much all of them can have to a certain extent. I'm going to go over a few more different ways of coupling fairly quickly because they're not as used as much. Uh, the next one is, and I just basically drew the main part of the circuit, is transformer coupling. Instead of using resistors and capacitors, we use a transformer. Now, we still get our blocking for our DC because DC can't go through a transformer, but our signal can go through. Now, some advantages of it, or one of the big advantages, actually a couple. One is impedance matching. If for some reason, these tubes are so drastically different and that the impedance, the output here versus the input here is so drastically different, the transformer can allow and help us with impedance matching to match the two stages. 
The other thing it can do is if I want more gain than I can from this tube to this tube, then I can do that by using a step-up transformer. I can get like a 1 to 2, double the output, 1 to 3, 3 times the output, and so forth, and step up my voltage going into the next tube to get more gain. Now, some of the disadvantages, again, it has a similar curb. It deals with, with on the low end of the frequencies, uh, there's internal capacitance between the windings in here, which will show up and cause attenuation at low frequencies. Also, due to that, some of that internal capacitance, there can be a definite point that we have a resonance frequency that, that shows up, which will actually create somewhere above in the middle frequency, but the high end may create a spike here, which will definitely could show up as interference or uh, other problems throughout the rest of the circuitry. It could actually take this tube and cause it to cut off or it could cause it to go in saturation which could cause us distortion. Now at high frequencies again uh, total circuit capacitance shows up and we start attenuating again and it can be even worse because of the some of the capacitance is in here. Now another route that we can use is very similar to the RC network but in this case instead of having a load resistor I use an inductor or choke here. Now the reason for doing that would be to reduce my uh, B plus voltage. Maybe I I'm worried about how much my power supply is going to cost me. Maybe I can't get a big enough trap power supply. My B plus is low. Well the thing is the B voltage I need here on the plate is directly referenced from my B plus but it's also with the drop across this. Well the DC resistance here on a choke is much less than what a load resistor could be. This could be like 50 or 60,000 ohms to make to get good gain on this tube but this here could be say three or four hundred ohms or less so I could get by with a smaller B plus or a smaller power supply that's really its only advantage uh, otherwise it has pretty much a similar curve as the RC and uh, the other problems with it as well as like this transformer couple as well as this, these parts cost a lot more than resistors. So you pay more. Now for a one-off thing, you're building one little amp, it's no big deal. But if you're building a million of them, then it becomes a big deal. Now the last little way of doing coupling is direct coupling. In all these other type of couplings, we want to keep B plus out of the grid. Direct coupling, on the other hand, we actually allow B, the B plus to be there. Now, the way that's done is with elaborate voltage divider, as you see down here. We have three resistors here, and we got some more other resistors. This one here, R5, acts as really kind of two part. It's the load resistor for this tube and can I act kind of like RG for this tube. There's a 50 volt drop across this. We have 200 volts here, we have 250 volts here, and we have a 50 volts that's dropping across here. Now, we want a negative voltage for a plate, or for a grid, for it to operate. Well, right now I'm showing 200 volts right here at the grid. But if you look at the cathode, it's hooked at 215 volt point right here between these two resistors. That goes to the cathode. Something I have not really made real clear, all voltages in a tube 
are actually technically referenced and considered at all times respect to the cathode. That's what we care about. Plate voltages when you're doing design and everything are respect to the cathode. Grid voltages are respect to the cathode. If I got 215 volts on the cathode and only got 200 volts here, that cathode is 15 volts greater than the grid and it's positive. The cathode looks 200 or looks 15 volts positive to the grid or the grid looks 15 volts negative respect to the cathode. <coughs> what that means is I've got my grid voltage, my operating point is minus 15 volts. So the tube works. Disadvantages. Or for one thing, I've got a lot more resistors in here. Some of these could be drawing a lot of current. It could be a lot of current going over some of these, and I guarantee it is in some parts. So that means I've got to have power resistors more expensive than resistors up in here, which could be very well could be half watt resistors. The other thing is this will have to have generally a much higher B plus voltage. Here it's 425 than even this circuit needs. So I have to have a healthier transformer to operate my radio. So it in turn costs more. In fact, all these others cost quite a bit more than this circuit. This is your cheapest circuit out there. These parts are pennies. So, and these don't really have a huge advantage uh, there's some slight advantages with special parts you can get a lot of advantage you know the transformer well mainly the transformer you can get high fidelity audio transformers but they're extraordinarily expensive uh, this one here works really good at low frequencies you know and these are generally used in places where they actually want a DC amplifier in other words we're actually amplifying direct current or very low frequencies. The high frequencies it still has the same problems. So in general this is what you're going to see most of the time is something similar to this circuit. Because it's the cheapest it works really good for what it is and everything else is going to cost more money and time and labor at times. So, Alright until next time uh, I'm not sure what I'm, uh, I'm probably going to do a video on how to you actually figure out some of the numbers and stuff for the various values and stuff the easy way. Until next time.